Hello, fine-tuned females. Hello, hello. Well, this is another special show because we all have our returning champion, Trevor Brandon Sharp here, and we are going to talk about a topic that is so relevant to all of us women who don't have kids. Today's topic is going to be feeling relevant and being childless, or as you say, child-free. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Freedom! I made it from jail. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so Trevor is the host of a very popular and fast-growing podcast called Done Being Single with her husband, Robbie, who's also an amazing musician. And if oh you're, my god! Oh my god! Yes. If you're ever in LA, the door knockers, the door knockers. We went to see our husband's band play, and damn, thank you. Damn, Thanks. what does he have? Is it a ten or twelve piece band that he has together? How twelve. Many? Good God. I thought you were going to say, what does he have, a 10 or 12-inch penis? <laughs> That's what I and thought. Does, what does he have? Does he have a 10 or a 12-inch? <laughs> oh, do oh, you tell. Oh, I swear I thought you were asking me that. <laughs> Let's be safe and say 11. He's got a, he's got a Jewish 10, Ooh, which is really a, good for <laughs> like a regular 3. No. <laughs> Ten's a lot. <laughs> uh, we, we like to start off with penis talk right in the beginning. It's helpful. Or Get vagina, it out of the way. Or vagina talk. We always talk Either about one. the badgies. But listen, before we go into our interview with the fantastic Treva, we are going to do a listener question. So I had one come in for me. I'm going to pull it up on my phone so I can read it exactly. Julie being such a popular broad. Mm. I get I get a lot of questions she about questions. health, fitness, weight loss, stuff like that. And hopefully I will soon be an expert more on hormones. Mm. So the question I got was... Hey, Jill, can you tell me what products I can have to suppress my appetite? I'm working very hard, and I feel like eating more. Please let me know. Hmm, was that for me? Because that sounds like my problem. <laughs> That's why I made this the question. Right. I was like, that, it, it's obviously something that is on everybody's mm -hmm. mind. Now, this woman is approximately the same age as us. Mm. Yeah, she is a fine-tuned female. Um, and I know her because she takes my classes at the gym. And uh, the first part of that question is supplements. Is there a supplement that I should take? Now, I don't recommend supplements for cravings because they don't usually work that well for, you know, as you know, suppressing appetite because you just get hungrier later. What I do recommend is some caffeine and lots of water and fiber, and that's not really a specific supplement, but it definitely helps curb hunger cravings. However, after the caffeine wears off, like any other supplement you might take, you'll still be just as hungry as you were before. So it's a very temporary fix. Then the second part of her question was, and I am working very hard, but I still feel like eating more. So that comes from a few reasons. Well, she's our age. So number one, my first thought is estrogen drop makes us hungrier. It affects Every hormone communicates with every other hormone. So once one hormone's out of balance, it's going to interact with other hormones. Mm. So when we lose estrogen, as we all know, we do get hungrier. So there's that. She can check mm. her estrogen levels, I said. The second thing is, oh, and another hormone to check is also your thyroid. Uh, if it's a thyroid issue, then you're going to have a sluggish metabolism and you'll still be normally hungry, but you're going to be gaining weight. Well, she didn't talk about gaining weight. She but just talked about hunger. Too much estrogen, doesn't that also make you gain weight? Yep. You don't want, mm. I mean, that's why we want hormones in balance. You, if you have too much, no bueno. Too little, very much no bueno, as mm. we can all <laughs> ascertain. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing I said to do is to eat a high protein and high fiber diet because it's been shown in studies that people that are on a higher protein diet also have less appetite because protein is very filling and it breaks down so slowly. And then the Fiber also keeps your stomach filled. So if you're eating like a paleo diet, which is high in protein and high in lots of vegetables and the good vegetables like broccoli and asparagus and uh, cabbage, you'll feel more full. And then the next part, I'm going to look back at... Can I also um, yeah. add to the... Please, list of things. please do while I drink a little bit. Okay. Oh, let me drink. finish the, the okay. other. Let me finish the other Filling two that I have on here, okay. and you can add on. Okay. So those are the first two. So I told her, you know, about the the diet that I would recommend, and uh, and I told her about checking her estrogen. Then I also said. 
Well, she's a little bit older now and her kids are out of college and one's still living home and I know one child has autism and so there's stress. So stress causes hunger, cortisol causes you to retain fat around your belly and then because she feels like she's gaining weight, she's exercising more. So once you're exercising more, you get hungrier. So people forget that the extra exercise, you might burn an extra 300 calories, but you're also hungrier for 300 more calories. So those were my four tips. You have another one to yeah, add? Yeah, I would say, um, and maybe it's just adding on to one of the things you were talking about, high protein. Yeah. Uh, eggs in the morning. Yeah. I find oh, yeah. will really yes because it it's high like protein yeah and you you don't have that that steep drop okay if you say if you had like a, a breakfast of high carbs or sugar yes even sometimes I I will have like a yogurt bowl I'll put, right. you know pull that's your mic up pull your mic up uh, through your face a yogurt yeah. fruit yeah. that's good and maybe like a sprinkling of granola mm -hmm. two hours later I'm famished really but if I eat eggs in the morning that kind of takes me through and. I'm kind of mm, good sort to of know. What do you have with the eggs? Like, uh, I'll throw in some tomatoes or whatever. Uh, but are you having vegetables? toast with it I'll or have anything? Some toast. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, sometimes a little cheese. I'm, although I'm trying to cut down on the cheese. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, stuff that sticks to your bones, um, I find, stabilizes your blood your blood sugar and keeps you from over eating yeah and i do intermittent fasting so i actually don't eat breakfast although the best intermittent fast to do um although you will be a little hungrier but just for for talking weight loss and trying to shed some extra pounds is to have your breakfast and your lunch and skip dinner you know breakfast well, I was like i gonna say that you have to have breakfast like a, a king, king lunch, lunch like, like a, a prince, prince and, and dinner like, like a pauper, pauper. <laughs> yeah, so if you do that, that's been shown to lose the to help you lose the most that's amount true. of weight. Yeah, because it, you're burning off your calories during the day when you're work, running around or doing stuff. I have so the opposite problem. Really? You too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stress just kills my appetite. No. Oh, kills there's it. two types of stress, yeah. right? Kills Anxiety it. kills my appetite, but like just stress of busy work, like I gotta get this done, I gotta get that done, I gotta get this done, I gotta go here, I gotta be there. Then I'm hungry. So it's the different. It's the busy stress makes me hungrier and anxiety stress makes me not oh, hungry. Oh, anxiety, forget it. I can't get, I can't eat a thing. Me either. I mean a thing. I get yeah, but I could certainly drink a lot of wine right when I have stomach. anxiety because, because I, I need to I calm a, down. I have a nervous stomach and then, yeah. I, you know. So what is I'm not that? To That's the, a good I'm point. I'm running to the toilet, not yeah. to the refrigerator. Me too. Why the higher, do you feel higher TMI? anxiety as we're aging? Yes. Okay. Why? Why because, is that happening? Because I, I think menopause is just is just a f mother fucker. I call it's it a mother mental can, I get, can we get to the bitch fest now? Yeah, yeah, can we can get bitch to the bitch fest. I, I decided that's my, mm -hmm. that's my, uh, that's a running theme <laughs> is bitching about menopause. Yeah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I'm still taking estrogen, so that's why I'm not having it so bad. But, you know, I still, I still definitely well, we feel don't know yeah, about I am levels. too. I'm on, um, I take progesterone at night and then estrogel on, mm. on the arm. Oh yeah, how do you find that? Uh, it, it's been a year almost a year it helps it helps it helps takes the edge off is it everything is it the magical you know the cure all no because you still i still have sort of like waves of sweatiness and fatigue and um and oh menopause is is also doing a number on speaking of stomach oh my god i mean like just it, it, I, can't, I don't know what it is it's like it's gastritis it's what it is and it's just um really ibs uh, yes okay it's really aggravating right. it yeah or it's just i don't Ugh. it's given me ibs Oh, wow. Well, it yeah. also gives me insanity and all a bunch of things. Because, so. it, because it amps up your anxiety. <laughs> right. It yeah. does. So, so, well, you know what? Menopause just amps up everything. Whatever you already had. Just monsters So, like, if you're just, you know, yeah. if you're a little down, you're fucking depressed. If ah. you're, like, a little moody, you're a effing bitch. Wow. Yeah. If, you know, if you already have stomach issues, forget about it. Now you're just... What about anger? Like, where does this anger come from? All of a sudden, everything pisses you off. Yes. Everyone pisses you off. You have zero tolerance. Right. But That's I had that when I... when. Well, I don't know if I'm in menopause yet. I'm just assuming, but because I'm taking... I've been... I've not, I've not stopped taking birth control pills because I feel better with it, and I'm low in iron, and the pill I take has just the exact amount of iron to keep my iron levels perfect, so I don't want to F with it if I don't have 
have to. But I mean, uh, before I took that pill, I was more irritable when I was. Well, that's just who you pill. are. Like you know. But really? I, I think maybe I have to up my pill because maybe it's not effective anymore because I'm just like irritable all the time at the smallest is that, thing. Is that what happens with hormones? You eventually sort of acclimate, and you yeah. need to. You have to up it. Well, because you're losing it, so you got to bring it back up, right? So you got to kind of, you got to really figure out what your levels are and what you really need, because it does change. What worked ten years ago isn't going to work today. I really resisted going on them. I was like, no, no, I'm never going to do it. You know, they're not nearly as dangerous as people say. All those studies that came out, I was listening to a doctor researcher, and he went through all of the research on this, and they really blew it out of proportion when they said that it increased ovarian and breast cancer incidence because they didn't look at a whole lot of other factors like what was the incidence of breast and ovarian cancer in their parents and their grandparents, and they, they just made a correlation. And so it was very poor science where they started advising everybody who has a history of ovarian yeah, breast cancer to not out. take it. Well, can I say something terrible, which probably a lot of people are going to say, what the hell, you know, but I think what's causing breast cancer too is doing too many mammograms. I mean, it's radiation and it must be doing something to you when you're getting those x-rays all the time. You know, like some people, they go every six months because they have a family history. Oh. And I just think that, you know, since there have been such a it's onset of so many mammograms, I also see that the breast cancer incidences have risen. I have heard so that. Great. I kind of like, yeah. I'm already a hypochondriac. This is just, <laughs> I, I can't, I, you know, it's just going to come to where I can't get out of bed. I refuse to get out of bed because I'm scared to do, er- and I am, I'm scared of, of yeah, x-rays I, I'm, I'm turning into my mother oh wow she was like a my grandmother never got a mammogram never yeah i mean my mom <laughs> is afraid of everything so and I'm, i kind of fear that i'm turning into her is that bad? we are i'm turning into my mom all her oh. anxieties are becoming uh, so, mine yeah so i'm really anti <laughs> anti chemicals anti for the most part medication right. um i try to do everything i can not to <gasps> sound like my mother um <laughs> in a good way her mother yeah. was like hippy dippy yeah well, she was natural she tried to find a natural way so she was against everything like not anti-medication as much as possible anti-chemical so, so, okay girls child free yes here's a topic for the child free episode mm-hmm. vaccinations would you if you had kids would you of course i would vaccinate would. them yeah my, all all my cousins are doctors and my pediatrician was my cousin i mean if he thought that there was any risk i wouldn't have but we also had less vaccinations when we were kids i had three yeah we had less and that was a lot back then uh, it's a tough one sometimes i wonder what kind of parent i would be you know what would would i you i would i mean you have to right you I would to, willingly do it because I don't want my kid to get I measles. I think when you're a parent, everybody says this, every woman says, you know, the minute that child is born and you hold it, everything in your life and the mind and all the things you believe before completely change. You just yeah. become another person. Well, yeah. put it this way. So. Um, when, you, when you get the flu or a cold, is that a good thing? Because now you have the antibodies to not get that particular strain of flu or cold again. Like now you're immune to that particular right. strain. Right. Oh, that's another thing I, I try not to do is um, anti, uh, so not, not anti-inflammatory. Flu shot? Oh, did I mention oh. menopause is like... <laughs> Make a brain? What was I saying? Yeah. Yeah. The brain fog? Yeah. That's uh, like the... On a good day, you have brain fog. On a bad day, you have dementia or whatever. Oh, my God. Like you can't remember anything. What are the anything? things you take to help knock out a virus or... St- Antioxidants? No. The thing that... Vaccination. No. <laughs> She's talking about no, now I've, now I've lost it to antibiotics. Yes. <laughs> oh, antibiotics. Yes. Oh, you can't take it's antibiotics. It's hard for, for me to remember that. Because you can't take antibiotics for a virus. You can only take right, it for no, an but, infection. But, but people rush to the doctor to get antibiotics. Yeah. Not me. Well, I made yeah, the mistake of not rushing, and it took three months to get over something that should have taken 10 okay, days. Okay, unless it's going on right. week number. Right. So you have to kind of, it's hard yeah. to gauge. Yes. You don't yeah. know. Well, the doctors, uh, my cousins told me in the year, I remember because I had a really bad bout of the, like, it was like swine flu um, on New Year's Eve of the changing of the millennium. So in 1999 going into 2000, mm. I had the worst flu of my life. Yes. And so I had a big long talk with my cousins because they were over visiting and because um, I was actually engaged at the time and we were having an engagement party on New Year's Day or the day after. And so I was telling them about this flu and they you know, told me all this other stuff to do instead 
and they said, we, you know, you've got to make sure, no matter what your mother says, because my mother was a hypochondriac, and if there's a pill or a shot, you take the pill or the shot. She was complete Western medicine, you know, whatever the pharmaceutical company says she does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you have to stop letting your mom, you know, take all these antibiotics and take all of, and, and talk you into taking yeah. antibiotics. Yeah. And they explained to me in 2000, so that's 19 years ago now, why, why, why we have this problem with superbugs. Yeah. So no, I tried not to take antibiotics, but I wind up usually on them. I wind up on like one a year. Last year was bad. I was on like three times. Yeah. Usually I get sick. Well, it's, it's been like once a year. And you know, I, I like to think that because you and I are in the fitness business yeah. and we're touching sweaty people and dirty equipment and that, you know, we built, we've built up a resistance of sorts, right. but you know, even, even so, um, I seem to get sick. Not it. Ha there were like three years in a row. I got sick right after Christmas. Right after. Me too. Like right in the first week of well, January. Well, the stress of Christmas makes kissing your system people. go down. It's kissing you're people. kissing touching people, people, touching, and then it all comes after. Like this is when you're most yes. vulnerable. Yeah, for like three years in a row. Yeah. And that happened. stress of all the travel and yeah. and the travel itself too, but the, the stress of buying all the gifts and like yeah, so a lot of people get sick right after right after Christmas. But um do you get the flu vaccine? Because I actually get the no. flu vaccination every year. That's, <laughs> and I have never had the flu. No, I'm afraid. Since, I, I got the flu vaccine once, or the shot, the flu yeah. shot. Yeah. And Jill knows this story. And I was going to go to the Caribbean for Christmas. So Canada and then Caribbean. So I get the flu shot because I'm thinking, okay, you know, I'm not going to get sick and all that. I get the worst flu of my life. Because what it does is it gives you some flu and your body's supposed to yes. build up an antibody. Right. Well, I didn't. I ended up getting this month-long flu. I ended up in a hospital in the Dominican Republic. So I researched on an oxygen thing. I, it was I, so bad. I researched this, and the doctors say, and I saw this in a documentary too, you cannot get the flu from a flu shot because the flu they give you is dead. Well, our doctor told me that it's because my body didn't build up enough of an antibody, it was too weak because I was stressed from work and preparing, that it actually let the flu in. Yeah, I bet you already had some flu in you. And um, then, I don't know. But, but no one knows. Was, but the, the yeah, going okay. thing is that because they're giving you a dead, a dead flu, yeah. that you Never can't get it. Never heard of that. So well, that's so I'm the so flu vaccine I'm like, is dead virus. But I, I'm sort of freaked out, freaked out by like shots and vaccinations yeah. and Me too. although Me too. I'm seriously considering the shingles shot mm. because my mother got shingles a few years ago and oh my god women get that when they're Ta -ta, you get the shingles. Oh. Well, I had it since I was small, so wow, I, mean, yeah. I saw her go through it's hereditary. Is it? Yeah. Okay. But I mean, you know. You know, I need a drink. This, yeah. this, this but alcohol relieves shingles, by the way. Oh. <laughs> it relaxes Excuse you and they me. go away. It's a very little known cure <laughs> for shingles. It's is my grandmother's cure to everything. A schnapps cures all things. Have one a day. Tequila never really does sick. knock out anything. <laughs> <laughs> stomach bacteria. It kind of does. I once had a stomach virus and I drank uh, vodka and I was better the next morning. See? Although, although a stomach virus usually only lasts 24 hours anyway. Right. So. 20, but I'd like to 48. think it was the Belvedere. <laughs> well, listen, or the stove is whatever I drink. That's the old school remedy that 98 year old grandma still lives by. So. I like to think. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, now that you've got a drink in your hand, let's Cheers, talk about everybody. being. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to thank do you this. for coming back, yes, Trevor. It's a here's pleasure. To you too. I and love too. you both. Oh, if you have you. questions, if you have questions, like I can't drink alcohol today because I'm doing a five day fast. Here's right now, two females mm. everywhere. I'm doing a five day uh, alcohol fast. Me too. Mm. I'm doing five days in one hour. <laughs> exactly. It's, con it's condensed. Uh, a five day alcohol fast would bloat me like crazy. <laughs> All right, this is uh, this is hibiscus tea. Okay, from Prolon. Anyhow plug. <laughs> I love this company. I've been doing their five-day fasting mimicking diet for a couple of years now. I do it twice a year. And then I compared it with a water fasting diet. So I did three days of water fasting, having caffeine only a few months ago. And then several times, three times I had done the Prolon fast. And it's just much easier to do the five-day on Prolon than three days yeah, of water. Yeah, because you're allowed to eat something. You're not yeah. just having one. It's worked for you. You love it because you're doing it all every so often. You love to do it. So you really believe in 
than this. Well, yeah, it does everything you know? that it does everything that I want. Exactly, it, it works. It, yeah, you, it works, and it's decreases. You know. Well, yeah, I mean, it worked on everyone. And you always that, say you feel better after. Yeah, everyone that was in the study too. I mean, it's not like I just went out and experimented on some <laughs> new thing, right? Like uh, there were clinical trials from USC, from the School of Longevity, you know, run by a famous uh, international internationally known researcher. So this thing was like vetted and done the right way. And I was like, sign me up. I want to try that. Mm -hmm. So I did. And I'm like doing it twice a year. Good for you. Yeah. But it decreases. The only fat that you lose is, well, the primary fat that you lose is belly fat. So okay. I think for women in menopause, it's probably a good thing. Hmm. And then there's this whole autophagy business. I, I kind of like my little sexy. Little, you like your fluff? It's I her have new friend. A, I like a little meat on my bones. Have a little friend. I, Something I, to cuddle. Because I'm telling you, I have the opposite problem. Uh, you're you're not going to hate me, but I have a hard time keeping weight on. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, we hate you. Okay, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> what? Even at this age, even in menopause, you have a hard time keeping weight on. It should get easier now. It's better <laughs> now, but I'm always conscious of being too thin. Okay. It, which should, is it should be a lot easier. Which is a look I do not like on myself yeah. uh -huh. at all. Well, it's not actually good for you when you get older to be and too no. thin because then you just get all wrinkly no. and... It's not, yeah. you know, you need a little body fat. A yeah, little. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally into my curves. I yeah. like my curves. I don't like being too thin. I don't like the look on me. I don't like, at a certain age, it's yeah. just, nah. Well, my husband just loves that woman shape, that hourglass. That's what not he's into. Not many so. men don't. Right. And right? so, you know, he doesn't like if I get too thin either. He likes to have some curve. Yeah. I, I always tell mm -hmm. my clients, you know, don't, you don't want to look like a 12 year old boy. No. I'm sorry. I do. You no, you do not. I do. I like it. She wants to look like a 12 year old man. <laughs> I like it. A lot of muscles. No, they're not a man really until they have their bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 13 year old. <laughs> no, I do. I like. I like. I like to have a lean frame. Um, I have arthritis, and with the less I weigh, the the, the less my joints hurt. And the other reason I do the prolon is because it decreases inflammation in my joints. My joints feel amazing after I do it. Um, like the last the last time I did it, I felt like I could do burpees and like my head could t go through the roof. Like I felt like I could jump a mile high. I felt oh great. Oh my god! But all none of my joints hurt. So yeah. So being lighter to me, uh, you know, I have stenosis in my spine. I've got arthritis in my hip from being born with hip dysplasia. So. If, for some people, if you have joint injuries, the lighter you are, the better it is. And also, okay. also belly fat, you know, that's where, that's the kind of fat that's, that's visceral, and that's the kind of fat that's more dangerous. So if I was going to have fat, I'd rather have it on my ass. And unfortunately, I don't get a fat ass. <laughs> Do you ever I get notice it how belly dancers and men like this, they have a little bit of a belly, and mm -hmm. that they find mm -hmm. very sexy? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I guess it's mm -hmm. to each his own, you know? I think also I spent so many of my younger years beating the crap out of myself. Yeah. Watching everything I put in my mouth. Yeah. And, and well, I had the opposite that's problem. Not I was sexual. spoiled. Yeah. I was spoiled because I could eat what I want and I couldn't get past 100 pounds uh, for the longest time being 5 foot 10. Yeah. But of course, with age, that changes. So you know, now you know, it used to be so easy for me to lose weight. Yeah, I just didn't have to I, eat a meal one night, and I was down. Back I, to I just, I really was probably borderline eating disorder, and uh, it was exhausting. It's like eighty percent of fitness instructors have an eating disorder uh, yeah, or disorder. You know, I kind of, <laughs> like I just got to somewhere in my late thirties where I thought, no, nah, this is for the birds. I just really, Oh, I know what it was. I got into a really bad car accident oh. and that, um, changed so much about just the course of my life and just the, the landscape of everything. And it included eating meat again. And I was vegetarian. Suddenly I wanted red meat and I thought, Life is short. I'm going to eat red meat. Right. And then I kind of thought, and you know what? This dieting and this constant obsession with my weight, and I just, I, no, I just let it no, go. No, I think you have to have a And then I got and the body yang. I wanted. Yeah, because you when have I to have stopped, yin yang, though. You know, when you stop I, stressing about it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yes. And I believe that is for life and love. And when you stop, like, stressing and obsessing and, um, worrying and wondering and waiting you know 
when you let it all go, that's when it usually happens for you, when you least expect it. It's true. A lot of people who can't lose weight are, can't lose weight because they're so stressed about they're it. They're so that their stress hyper. hormones are up. Like I said you, to that woman, your stress hormones are up. Healthy. You can't lose weight. You cannot be hyper too hyper focused on anything. You're just it's never gonna happen, ever. Well, I mean, whatever you want too badly never happens. It, it happens no, when you take doesn't. a step back. Yes. It comes to you. It's like chasing a butterfly. Yes, just stand still. Yes. You know, and turn your attention right. toward other things. Right. This Happiness is, the, is like a butterfly. This right. is the teaching of the Tao Te Ching. Who? Yes. But you know what? I also think there's an art to cuisine and food, and there's a passion, and there's a different element to it. You have to, you know, like yes. we can't just always eat and focus on what's best for us. Sometimes you have to enjoy something that's just artful and tasteful. And maybe it's rich, but it's part of the experience of living your journey, you know? I don't want to die saying I never had something wonderful to eat or something rich to eat. I want to have a balance. I'm telling you, life's just too short to to worry about every little thing that you eat. And we're all going to go. It's not healthy. Food is, is... God, it's love and sex and, and joy. And, and anything you do, over, and, you know, anything you overindulge in is not good for you. It's all about balance. you got to create yes. balance. You know, if you eat too much, if you eat too yes. little. moderation. Moderation. On my deathbed, I will, two things. One, <laughs> I will have a Pink's hot dog. <laughs> I will never eat one of those things. I just can't. I've never had one of I those. can't me either. I can't bring myself to, like, when you talk about obsessing over food, I'm like, I can't put anything in my body that is like that. Well, I just don't have a hot dog passion. I don't either. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, like, everyone <laughs> everyone eats them. Yeah. And they'll, you know, so if, if for anyone who's ever been to L.A., it's the most famous okay, hot dog Okay, what would stand. your last meal be if you were, like, given a last meal? I hate to be morbid. But. I don't know. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> but what I, do want to, what I do want to talk about is being childless, because the second thing, I wonder what a pink's hot dog tasted like. Now, Number one, and then secondly, I will wonder: Did I regret not having kids? That's a These good are the one. two things on my deathbed. So, ladies, we are childless, and at the moment, I'm quite happy about it. But uh, Anita, you've been having a little anxiety over it. I know, I know. That's because I'm an only child. Voila, she understands. So you kind of have the yin yang effect. Like for a long time, it never bothered me. And then I guess as I'm getting older and the hormones are changing, I'm kind of thinking: Where's my legacy? You know, where's the continuity of me? There's nobody else but me. You just thought of this now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Some people are a little slow to the uptake. (laughs) And then I think about, you know, like, I mean, but, you know, for me, I don't know if it it wasn't really a choice. It's just the way things fell into place. Like, I never said I don't want to have kids. Actually, when I was in my 20s, I was going to have five, you know. I just wasn't married then, and I didn't have the right person in my life. And that person came along later. And I think, Trevor, you can relate to that. Wait, right? How old were you when you got married? I forgot. I was like in my late 30s. Late 30s. Okay. Yeah. That's not too late. Okay. Well, so it was just a balance of everything yeah. going question. on at the same time. This and married to ben. your current husband. And being very far from all family and having a child that never know, like, the life did of you, grandchildren. Did, you, did you, know. you try? Were you guys... We went on, you know, it's like kind of hot and cold because he traveled seven months of the year, first of all. So that was really a hard way to make, you know, and then I wanted, my dream was to have a balanced family. Like I wanted the, you know, a family around so that the kids would know their relatives and there'd be birthdays with the kids and not that you're all isolated and alone. And then there were so many other variables involved. You know, my husband did have a child. So, you know, who, who... Yeah. So you're a stepmom. I'm a stepmom okay. and you know, and, and it, you also think about the effects of that and you know And it's the just, stepson's in another country though. Uh, yeah, so you know, kind of like you kinda of don't want them to feel like, Oh, you started this whole family and I'm in another you know what I mean? It's it's just like there were so many things the work schedules were fourteen hour days and weekends and it okay. was really hard to balance all that and then the next thing you know, five years pass by. Right. And you're like, Oh, where did that happen? Did you, know? you ever stop? Did you ever did you ever say no? Like, uh, had, were you always just having sex and hoping and wishing? Or they were always having sex. Well, we always did. Always. Yeah. That was not a problem. <laughs> but did you so ever... five o'clock, time for sex. No, we just <laughs> did Did you ever stop trying? We didn't really try. We just felt like life was overwhelming as is. So what ha- what we had to make had- so many sacrifices already. Oh, this is way personal, but I mean, were you on birth control? Yeah. Yes. I had to be on birth control because I never got a real period. I was started off my period at 17 with birth control. And they told me I might have a hard time conceiving because oh, okay. I was a little... Uh, uh, uh. Okay, <laughs> so you couldn't have gotten pregnant. You, weren't really, you were on birth control. I was, but I stopped a few times. Yeah. Okay, yeah. to try to have a kid. 
Well, also just to take a break from birth control because okay. you can't be on birth control your whole life. Like that well. doesn't work, right? But yeah. Did we try? I, I was it. Um, well, we didn't really try or not try it. We just left it to the gods. Yeah, <laughs> and the gods weren't like. Okay. Yeah. You know. I went off birth control for like ten years. Um, when I was with uh, one of my ex ex boyfriends, I decided to go back on, and it was the best decision I ever made because my periods were so heavy and so strong, yeah, and I got bad such periods. bad. Pe- I mean, I got it for eight days. Most people are like, they started on a Monday and they're done on Sunday at the longest. I'm like, okay, now it's the following Tuesday, and it's oh just going God. away. See, when miserable. I stopped the birth control, I only got a three day period at max. They were always super light and faint. Okay, yeah, so no, now no. now you're kind of wistful. Thinking, oh, maybe we should have tried harder or more, you know, taken. Yeah, more like prior, maybe the you know, extraordinary. We had different priorities. Measures. We had a lot of people to take care All of. All right, you know. You know, it was busy and building a big empire, you know, wasn't easy. And you make sacrifices. Everything's a sacrifice in life. But the person you were building an empire for has lots of kids. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. There's the rub. So they're yeah. busy being the but hard workers. They had all their families here, so they had a lot of help. You know, I, 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 I have to believe that things happen or don't happen right. for a reason. Mm-hmm. When you're here isolated alone, you know, and you have to travel a lot and everything, you have to leave your baby, yeah, the well, thing you love the most, in the hands of people that are employed. They're not yeah, family, I mean, you know. It's, it's you so hard. Do, you do what you have to at the time, and... I just think that um, I don't know you you it's a calling I mean it, whatever it is you choose to do in life and my story is a little different than yours. Well, I think for I was, me it was more fear-based. Like I just panicked about, you know, I don't have my mom here or anybody I trust, and right. I'm going to have to go and travel here and there, and I, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know. Like to me, it was just so opposite of how I was brought up. Some people have so little fear, they're like, ah, yeah, I gotta, I'm not one of them. <laughs> some people are like, I got a, I got a <laughs> shitty job. My husband's an asshole, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to pop out a few kids anyway. Well, then they have a lot of support around them somehow, or whatever. Or not. Not. Or, or they not. don't. Yeah. I mean, those people blow my fucking I know, mind. I they was gonna pop out three kids. Like, didn't we talk about a family member? Um, well, several family members actually. So I can't even say just one. But we, there were some family members were like, what? And, and another family member said, well, "Why are you having a kid when you can't afford it?" You know what? A lot of people, and I have a family member like that in my, in my father's side that had kids, and you know, oh good, I didn't want to mention the kids. <laughs> well, the kids to them are their wealth. That that's their that's their bounty in life, you know. And they struggled and managed, and yeah, they didn't have the best of everything, and that was okay because to them it was all about their kids. But this family member couldn't actually afford and had to borrow money to help take uh, care of the kids. Yes, which was really annoying to everybody else because they didn't understand that. But you know. I mean, it all works out in the end. It depends who you are and what you want. I mean, that's, you know, they made it and it worked it, out. It, right. It has yeah. to be a priority. It has okay. to be a priority and a passion. If that's really your passion and that's what it's all about for you. Uh-huh. And you that's what I it. always tell Tata. I'm like, there's two types of people in this world when it comes to this. Number one, there's the people who believe that family is the most important thing. That's what we are here for. We are here to create families. And then there's other people that are that believe that you no, know, we're here to create a life for ourselves and to enjoy this limited time that we have on this planet. Right? And that and you can't have both of those. If you're here to enjoy just your life and your time on this planet, then you can't spend all of your time worrying about, you know, kids and family. If you want to well, and the up. sacrifice you want to make at a certain age. Like if you're in your 40s and you want to start a family, you can't have that life you've, you're used to having. That was me. Right. So that's why I believe there's two types of people. Yeah, so I would yeah. add a thre- third. Okay, go uh, ahead. Uh, those that are seeking connection. So yeah. maybe it's not family that's the most important, just the concept of connection. Agreed. That is me too. So the uh, so if I could share my story. Well, first I want to yes. hear your story because okay, I'm well, here every week. <laughs> so it was not a priority for me. Uh, neither was marriage for the first 20, 30 years of my life. Uh, I had a very late biological clock. It, it went off. I overslept. Okay. <laughs> it, I, I didn't hear. Turn that alarm off. <laughs> I, maybe I heard it, or I, I just hit the snooze button. I kept hitting the snooze button. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just didn't hear it until it really rang, uh, probably in my early 40s, and then wow. I panicked because I thought now you're out of time. Shit. 
43. Uh, nobody wants to be a single mother by choice. No one, no, you know, young girl dreams of, oh, one day I hope I have a child on my own with no husband. <laughs> you know what? Said I no actually, child ever. Said no I child actually ever. was like you. I was a late bloomer and I didn't really want to get married. I wasn't rushed into it, like, until later. And I was okay to have kids and be a single mom, though. I said, you know what? Maybe I'll just have children, and, you know, it'll be okay because so I'm in total that, control. Right. Well, I was you, but I did it. I went for it. You did. I acted on it. Oh, my okay? God. Okay? Because I knew that I didn't, I, I, there was no boyfriend, no significant other in my life at the time, and God knows when that guy was going to come around, 50. Um, <laughs> and so I thought, well, shit, you know, if not now, when? If not me, who? So I just embarked on this crazy single motherhood by choice uh, journey. It did not work, but I did it. I just went for it. You're I brave. Spent a ton of dough. You put my body amazing. through hell. Wow. Uh, you know, the I, hormone hell. I, oh went through hormone hell yeah, I can imagine. Um, not all of it not not until the later stages of it yeah because i thought let me try the old-fashioned way you know turkey based oh the sex yes so i did everything yeah so i turkey based it <sighs> uh i had timed intercourse uh and then later on i went to ivf and then and then donor egg I even mm. found a cousin. I recruited a cousin of mine, much younger, to give me her eggs. That didn't work. So wow. all said and done, it was like a four-year odyssey and a however many thousands of dollars, and I'm still paying it off. We, we had an at-length discussion about this in our first interview with you. So yeah. everybody, please refer to our first interview with yes. Miss Treva. Yeah. And you will get I the details. I lost my virginity with you guys. I lost my... Right? Was I number one? You were number, number one. one. You're still I number one, baby. My, thank you, you baby. Are. I lost my fine-tuned female virginity. We broke you in. We broke you in. I've never been yeah. the same since. <laughs> <laughs> Nor you look a little. You have it that only, glow. It now. could only get worse, honey. <laughs> I needed a cigarette after yeah. that episode. I may yeah. need one now. A so then, after this one. So then you kind of just it. came to terms and said, maybe motherhood's not for me, or did you feel like uh, a failure? I was very sad, but I could not indulge myself in self-pity because life had to go on. I only had me. Uh, I didn't have a partner or a guy or a husband to hold my hand and comfort me. It was like, okay, I'm back to me. Now let's move on. Yeah. Let's move on. Just let's not linger. Um, so I, and I felt um, kind of like probably a little bit better than most women that maybe don't try it because I, I, I could be I was okay with it I mean you're never okay with it not working but I felt like well I gave it my all and it didn't work well, so it I wasn't have meant to, to be that's so I destiny, have to you know? yes right. and not question it no. and not go down that it's not dark like you didn't try so you spiral gave it a good of shot. why me yeah. why not right. you probably would have given birth to a serial killer anyway so <laughs> it's probably well stagible. let me tell you something funny <laughs> I have some friends that just go, they envy my life. And I'm like, why? And he goes, because you never had kids. And so yeah, there are yeah. people that love it. And then there's other people it, that, you it, know, they maybe were not as cut up for it as they thought On second they were. thought, maybe I um, shouldn't have had five kids. <laughs> I do. I do. F I, I relate to what you said at the mm -hmm. beginning of the conversation about having a legacy. Yeah. Um, and being an only child. And recently, my husband and I got our wills done. Oh. And that was really heavy. Mm. That's hard. Ah. Uh, for that reason, though, because who there's no one after me. I know. I don't so have siblings. Do? I don't have children. Right. And it got it. It was kind of um, depressing, and I panicked a little and got very um, uh, just sad and sort of fearful about what is my future going to be. And and when you when you're asked those when the lawyer is asking you those questions, well, who are your beneficiaries and who's your power of attorney? Mm -hmm. And I'm. Tata is starting to have heart palpitations. Oh I feel no, no. because I they're know. afraid to do their will. You have guys haven't done your will. No, they're afraid for that reason. It's, well, we're not afraid. Now heavy. you're giving her palpitations. <laughs> it's it's it, you feel very good about doing it, but wow, all those those like motherhood, those things, those feelings, those you know those regrets, they kind of all came up out of nowhere. I thought they were all gone. 
But I don't know. Let's say your kids turned out to be real shits and were entitled. Maybe you wouldn't want to leave it to them. After all, like you know, there are people that don't. Listen, (laughs) I I was, I was, I always wanted siblings, and then, and then sometimes I hear my friends talk about their horrible brothers and sisters, Mm -hmm. and then I go, "Whoo!" I dodged a bullet. I mean, there's good and bad. You know (laughs) what I mean? Like you never know. Like I've seen some of the best parents have the worst kids of and I'm course. like how could that happen they were such good parents they gave everything you never you never know you never, you know. never know there's and no then, guarantee and then you say to yourself well maybe it didn't happen for a reason maybe god forbid you know you just can't question you it. can't question you can't it. because no. it sends you down a very bad I mean, if you place. have them, you have them, and then you have to take it from there and do the best job you can. Yes, you know, but you can't regret what didn't happen. There could be other reasons for it. You yeah. don't know. No, you, you, you know? can't question. question. Do you feel judged by other women uh, or men? Um, there was a time when, before I was married that I felt so excluded from that married mommy club. And yeah. And that married mommy club, and because <laughs> you know all my friends are married with kids for the most part, except you got. Well, no, you're married, but um, that was a bad time in my forties. The four, That's my 40s, hard. My forties because suck. you're you're, you're 40, friends. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, people. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ooh, uh oh. Ooh. Some deep. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Uh-huh. Your forties, when you're single and childless, your forties are. <sighs> It's there. It's it can be painful, and um, wow, you really gotta find every ounce of strength and self worth, and uh, to get it to get to survive it. And that's what I had to do because yes, you feel judged and you feel excluded, and you feel um, like you're not you're not worthy or you're not good enough or you're not a you're not a this, woman or you're not a woman and <laughs> you're not in the it club. Was, it was tough those years very tough so when women say to you so how many kids do you have and they don't even know you don't have how does that make you feel like uh do you feel like a kid in the gut i think or you know yeah because you tried well there's an (laughs) assumption that of course you have kids you you know well how many kids do you have kids yeah it's do you have kids not how many kids do you have right and i'll say no 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 tried but no and you know they go. Yeah. They why do on. you even have to make yeah, that no, excuse? I, I, that's what I hate. Like that's a wrong question to ask. But somebody. at least Trevor tried. We you didn't know, even try. No. But the bottom line is, don't ask that question because you don't know how hard it might have been for you trying, and what a painful experience that was because you really, really wanted kids and it didn't work out and it just put you in a yeah, big but they depression. Yeah. They don't know that. They don't know. I know, but know don't that. ask. Like it's just you know. Well, I don't. I don't know. I think it's it's not a bad question. Um, they don't know. No. Yeah. Uh, maybe if they went on with the quest, the line of questioning maybe that would be a little inappropriate but to say you know oh you like they're trying to relate like oh you have kids right or do you have kids you understand what i'm going to say no i don't i don't <laughs> i understand what you're saying i was shell shocked because somebody said you don't have kids and i'm like no go, oh you're so lucky i'm like what? oh yeah i've heard that i too. was like what yeah. what do you mean that's awful how yeah, did you but, say that you're yeah, a mother <laughs> um the it, it, almost being married was worse than not having kids when you're when you're you know it's not with every group but with some of these my social groups being not married was like uh that was tough. Well, I got a little taste of motherhood because, you know, half the year, my husband's son, my stepson would be here. So, you know, of course, you always assume most of the responsibilities being the woman. Yeah. <laughs> and I did. So I got a taste of it. So I can't say I never experienced. I mean, it's not like having, I guess, your own. It's not my legacy legacy from my bloodline, but it's the still mothering. In my 20s. Taking care of someone and caring about them and making sure that, you know, they're having a nice time when they're here or they're feeling okay. Because it's really hard to take on someone else's child. Yeah. And knowing Does Jim that... Jim have kids? No, Jim doesn't no, have kids. No, and you, you're dealing also with a lot of mental scars that they have. You know, they, they're dealing with yeah. ideally what child, and I know I had this fear, doesn't want their parents to be together. You know, a broken sure. family is a very tough thing. So you have to deal. That's an added thing. I assumed I was going to be a stepmother because I thought, oh, I'm dating all these guys with kids. <laughs> and I thought, well, if it didn't happen for me, I'll just be a, a stepmother. Well, I was but supposed to be the mother either. extraordinaire because I used to babysit everyone's kids when I was like starting at 10 till about 16. Yeah. And they loved me. And so I was really good with that, you know. It's a funny thing. Like <laughs> Maybe I had had my fill by then. When you're an only child and people say, uh, you know, in, in, when you're younger, you love it. You mm-hmm. kind of love it. Because, yeah. you know, you don't want siblings until you get to an age where you are uh, oh, to have siblings when your parents get older and you wish you had siblings to help. No, I never and then, did. <laughs> and then, and then the whole the whole child free thing. Um, yes, you know, I tried very hard. I was 
terribly disappointed it didn't happen but then I let it go and so these however many years since the 10 plus years that it's been since I went through it um, have I haven't given it a thought and then you get to a certain age and you're doing your will and then it all comes back oh, right. sure. and you go oh I you know shit I really wish it worked out it just it ebbs and flows you know the the um, uh, what's the word um, when you kind of muse you mu you muse about it mm -hmm. oh you know if ruminate you, you ruminate you muse uh, what life would have been like what is the future who's going to take care of me as I get older uh, you know that gets heavy as I was mentioning that's the and one then thing you, that you I start regret. thinking about the kids oh right just the who's going to take care of me who's when I get take older care of me because given Jim's cholesterol problem I'm going to outlive him so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't really worry about it until then I was like oh shit yeah I'm but your kids them. might just stick you in a home and say I don't want to be bothered with her well if it's a yeah. nice one like the one my great 102 year old uncle lives in <sighs> that one's not that one's not right. so bad but I'm just saying like you know there are people that are natural nurturers and care yeah. about their family and there's others that just like can't be bothered too much work well on the regret scale well first I have to say that I also was for about six months I lived with my first boyfriend out in LA um, who was a divorced guy who had a young like baby like six years old Ooh. and she came to live with us mm -hmm. and so I was you know literally making her lunches and taking her to school because his job go yeah ahead. drink some patrol it's all girl. yours girl this you go as much as you can take you go we'll do some shots. I'm getting a hot flash <laughs> no it's just really hot and and there's some the ice down there it's the sauna version of fine tuned meals today well at that <laughs> point so I was in my early 20s when that happened and I was like I have to put off marriage and childhood for a very long time or having kids right I should say for a very long time because I got a taste at a very young age and I was like and that there ended my rush to get married and have kids because I was like oh man yeah it was tough because I you know whatever I had to like cook for her I didn't like this you know it's I had a all lot of work and I went through it I know what it is all it's those brat attacks yeah but it does take your mind off everything else <laughs> like you're so focused on that you forget it's about true other it stuff. did take my mind off you of know? everything else <laughs> except you... for wishing I had a job because my boyfriend had a better job so one person had to stay home he was making more money so I had to stay home with with his kid and I was like oh. all right so I anyway think the problem is too like you're dealing with some you know with you have a spouse who has a child you know my whole thing was I just want to have fun you know I want to be a child again with this child and we'll do fun things and all that but you forgetting that they have a lot of scars mm -hmm. so they're not always looking at it like oh this is fun this is great you know right, they're they're right. dealing with their emotional battles right. so you're dealing with a problem and rather you're missing out on a lot of the well, fun. Well Chelsea if you're watching this I'm sorry <laughs> thank you very much for teaching me a lesson and I hope everything's turned out great for you. She was very. She, I don't have anything against her, but I, I it gave me a self check. Well, you know what? Me. One thing about having kids is you get to live your childhood over again because you get to do all those fun things as yeah, a kid again. Yeah. You know, I, why can't I mean, you go I to Disneyland it. if you want but to? But taking kids along is fun because they're so excited. So you act like a kid again. You're like, ah, let's do the roller coasters. I think I would have been a really good mom. Yeah, because I'm sure. I am a nurturer. Yeah, and uh, I just got so many lessons growing up at, as to what not to do that I. I, you know, knew that I was so convinced it was going to happen. I thought this is God's will. It's going to happen. And uh, I was just prepared for to do everything that I did that I did not yeah, experience. Right. And so, yeah, it was devastating. You know, I'm not going to yeah, lie. Well, it was, that's it good. was really devastating. It's truth. Yeah. yeah. It, it, but and also what made it even more sort of uh, cruel was that I had gotten pregnant before and couldn't didn't, didn't I mean, work out. way many years mm -hmm. uh, earlier and had abortion me too I had one pregnancy I'm not ashamed me either take that Missouri Alabama yes Georgia. seriously not yeah. ashamed how old were you uh, 20s you know no. well there's no way I was 30 there was just not possible I have no family living out here and there's just uh -huh. no way
You see? And I didn't think that's that... That's a big thing. Because if I had not moved here and probably was still back home with lots of family, I probably would have had kids, for but sure. But I also had the foresight to think that this relationship might not work out. And I did wind up breaking up with this guy, even though we were engaged. This is the person I told you when I had the flu. Mm -hmm. We were This mm -hmm. was our engagement mm -hmm. uh, week. <laughs> and I was like, swine flu. But uh, yeah, so I wound up aborting the baby. And it was... I, I, I had no qualms about it. I'm like, I can't A, afford one, and I'm not sure this no. relationship's going to work I, out. I, I, Hello, right? I mean, uh, there's no way, and to think that um, that some states are implementing legislation that would force Microphone. a woman that would force a woman, the state forces you to have to bear a child is just uh, it's insanity to me. Yeah, on, on so many levels. Complete but there's insanity. no way. There's no way. But you know, I th often think, well, maybe God punished me, or mm, you know, if I had mm. I known, if someone. Now that gets into like, do we believe in God? Yeah, but let's do that on another. another so that will be your third comeback. Yeah. But, but I made peace your with trifecta. that. I made peace with that because you know things happen when you're young and reckless or not even maybe it just shit happens you yeah. know what, what are you it, gonna do i find incredible it used to be i mean when i went to school everybody was getting married after college and it was a thing and then they had the kids it was just protocol and then i moved here and you know i meet so many women that don't have kids and it's almost like god it's almost like it's almost outweighing the people that i know that do have which is really odd because that i didn't grow up that way i i find that the couples that uh, kind of made a conscious choice not to do it. Seemed yeah. to be very happy. Yeah, I think it's very. a selfish and choice, though. N no. Okay. Yeah, why no. do so many people say we're selfish for not having kids? Uh, I don't know because uh, that's the order, natural order of life, and right. that's what you're supposed Continue to do. Continue the species. Um, no, it, it's. It, you are your... But says who? Who so, says that this is what we have to do? This is... I'm going to tell you the reasons I didn't have a kid. The only reason I... The, the one regret I have is like, yeah, in case I'm solo in that old age home and I have no one to come freaking visit me. Now that's selfish. <laughs> because my mother used to say, oh, I wanted to have kids because who's going to take care of me when I'm old? <laughs> that is fucking selfish. And it made me really think like... Okay, if I can't you know, take care of myself, right. I'm not going to be a burden to my kids to have to take care of me like it's their fucking responsibility. Right. You opt to bring a child into this world. Right. That was your choice. You have to take care of that kid. And then it is not your kid's responsibility to have to take care of you. Certain societies say that you do, but those are societies, somebody wrote that rule. Is it inherent in us? Well, there are certain tribes, when you're the old one keeping the tribe down, there's a tribe in, uh, I forget, South America or Africa mm -hmm. that I would was reading about in Sapiens mm -hmm. that you're the old one you're whole, you're slowing down the pack we're gonna to kill you <laughs> and they just, grandma right. bye grandma <laughs> well elephants by Auntie Jane elephants leave their old behind and let them die exactly but, right. so who's to say so the Asian <laughs> cultures say you have to take care of the elderly right. but there are some tribes still living the way our ancestors did and like oh you're slowing down the pack Bye bye. Yeah. But Auntie May, you're out of here. Modern medicine is only reason why we're not all getting pregnant because it's not nature's way, unless there's some kind of quirk in nature that you can't. Like, you know, you're just one of those people that just can't yeah, conceive. Right. But if you weren't taking birth controls or condoms or whatever to stop a pregnancy, you would be having babies without having a choice. Like, it just, that's because that's what nature wants. Uh, I had a million people tell me I was selfish. You're so selfish and irresponsible. So fucking opposite. Excuse you me. are so, <laughs> you know, what so you're true. doing, what you're doing on your own, that's so selfish and irresponsible. And can you get those people in here so I can smack them upside uh, their head? You know, people uh, actually maybe, said that to you? Oh, God, yeah. Everybody used to tell me, oh, my, my own God, parents. you should have been, been a mom. You would have been so great. My own parents were so condemning. <laughs> oh, my God. I have yeah. a lot of people in my family that never had kids, so they I don't know. They were not at all on board with what I was no? doing, so I had to kind of go underground. Were they religious? Like No. They were, they were just fearful. They were just afraid. They well, just thought it was it was ill conceived and it misguided. And you know, maybe it was. I mean, I was a trainer. I was a, a single woman, a trainer on a trainer's income. It probably was stupid. But you know what? When you're that age, women in your forties, I'm talking <laughs> to you. <laughs> 
uh, batten down the hatches. <laughs> um, when you're that age and the clock is tick, tick, ticking, you do not have time to go to work, the, crunch the numbers and go, hmm, you know, can I afford <laughs> this? And is yeah. this the right time? Right. And well, maybe I should wait a little longer when I find a husband or when I make more money. No, right. your time is of the essence. Yeah. You've got to like do it. Yeah. And it is, it is so, you got to just plug your nose, take a breath. And I, my whole thing was leap and the net shall appear. I disagree. Leap and the net shall appear. That, that is I true. Was I was like, just, I'm doing it. I'm going to launch. I'm going to go for it. And whatever happens, but happens. Do you want to be a burden on everyone else in your family? If you can't afford to give your children you know, a meal and whatever, because you didn't think it out. Well, really you don't have time to think it out when you're a single mother by choice. I know, but you that's... Don't, you you know, rare, well, but don't forget, there are some people in the families that believe that family comes first and whatever. So she had a baby and she couldn't afford it. We're here I to step that, in. I think that's that what my parents for. would have eventually have come around <laughs> uh, had they well, seen my parents their, always their grandchild. Said, you better yeah. make sure you're self-supportive before you bring kids into this world. You can't count on anybody. And yes, and I, do, I, I totally agree with that. <laughs> right. But sometimes there are extraordinary... You know, well, that got scared. That scared me because then I'm like, oh my god. I, I mean, I, I got uh. myself into a corner. I really, I waited way too long. Yeah, I, I thought I about assumed, this long I and assumed hard. my fertility would last, and and no problem. And oh yeah, no. I, I, oh, I, women in your forties. <laughs> May I speak? Yes. Freeze your eggs. Yeah. No, that's, that's a, a good, good idea. idea. That's okay. a good one. Okay. I'm Jim throws his sperm. Okay, I would say this to women. Eggs, though. Uh, it, technically, in your 30s. If yeah. you're in 35, 36, 37, freeze your damn eggs. You may never need them, you may, okay? But just having the peace of mind, that's what I... I didn't even think yeah. to freeze my eggs when, when I was 35. So by the time I hit 42, I, there was no time to freeze. I had to go for it. Yeah. So I did. Well, so my thought was... The most important thing to me, and I thought long and hard on this. This is not like something I'm just ruminating about now on today's episode. I've thought about this for many, many, many years. And the number one important thing to me was to have a great relationship. Because to me, the connection with the right man that I can spend the rest of my life or his life with in this case, <laughs> it was the most important thing. And then if, a, if it's the right time to have a child, then that will come. Because you don't want the baby, and this is my advice mm -hmm. to women in the 30s and 40s, if you're not sure that that relationship is going to last forever, think about what you're doing to your kids. Because my mom married a guy who was the wrong guy for her, on the rebound, twice her age, and was an asshole to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, think about what you're doing. You want to have a kid, so you're bringing a child into this world. Look at the man you're married to, or vice versa. Men, look at the woman you're married to. Is this the person that's going to be there? Because my dad was like, oh, I didn't really want to that's have a kid. So, but see ya. Some of us don't have that luxury. That's what I'm to saying. To open your eyes? Sometimes some... To look at yeah, your... No, no. What do you mean? To say, well, I, you know, it's... I've got a... I, if you're at a certain age, sometimes... Look, it's... Sometimes it's not all perfect. Well, that's it's what not, I'm saying. That's to me is what's selfish. My mom is like, okay, I met did, a guy... Did she... Okay, did she... Did she have more kids after you? Yes, one more. D did she need to? She didn't need to. No one needs to. Did That's something like no one needs to have kids. Okay. You don't need so, to. Nature does it, but you don't need to. Okay. Unless so, but, you think you need someone to take care of you. She knew this guy was not a good guy. I don't know what she was thinking, but think a little bit, you know? And, uh, I mean, certainly, you know, he... he I no, really no, think you know, he was a playboy. Yeah, I think, think but even the you, nicest guys you think are yeah, going to be great exactly. people. You and, never know. And, and, and life loyal changes. partners and great dads. Life changes. They Midlife are, crisis. Do you ever things. really know anyone? No. You don't really, you but don't. think a little bit. Like, spend some time. Like, they met, they started dating, they got married. Uh, this was her second husband, and the, my other brother was from her third husband, and she got pregnant and didn't really check with him to see if he really felt like being a dad again because he was 56 and already had two kids wasn't the best dad to them either so maybe look like what's this man's relationship like with his kids from a previous marriage from a woman he really was in love with <laughs> you know he loves you because you're half his age and you got big titties so <laughs> you got tickled bitties and <laughs> that's what he big was in love with big ones at yeah. the time she had, my mom had some <laughs> tickled bitties and he, he fell in love with her and then they 
strong right after the babies. Apparently, no, they did not drop for a while. Okay, that's she good. did well. She did well with good those for her girl <laughs> with the tiggies. But they, but he split <laughs> anyway. He was over them. Yeah. So but it's you like know what? so you got to think a little bit about who your partner was. So to me, my oh. lesson mm-hmm. was hmm. my lesson was be in a great relationship first and then it will be devastating if that relationship doesn't work out but make sure you're bringing a child into this world out of love because I think it is the most selfish thing and I have some girlfriends who did this they brought a child into this world without a man and the man was like not interested in, in at all and I think that's selfish because you're having a kid because you want a pet you want someone to like do shit with or you could be a really good mom who just loves kids and you are self-sufficient and you don't you know, it doesn't matter whether you have a man or you don't. You just oh, want to have children. If you're self-sufficient, yes, I do Listen, have a Listen, my friend. other grandmother always gave me this advice because she was married three times. And she said, Anita, just have kids, but don't have a man. Because the man will bring you down. Well, that's, and the kids, they'll be there forever. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the argument that single, mother, single mothers by choice use for uh, donors. That, that's why they're so against using known donors. Always use an unknown donor. Always, because there are no, there will be no problems. No you problem, will have yeah. no issues. And and dads knocking on your door five years later asking for their kid back. How do you tell your crazy kid about why they don't have a father? I and will that cause I, problems for them mentally? Like, I don't will think they so. seek it out when they're I teenagers? Do not, I have a friend who have who has two donor kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think she feels at all nervous when that conversation comes up it's it's very common yeah i do have a friend that did that too she had a sperm donor who was the guy she was dating and he was going this is a known donor oh no this was a known donor and he didn't want to like raise a family because he lived in mozambique (laughs) and uh yeah she and she loves black men and she wanted to have a a black baby Mm -hmm. and she this guy was super hot and she wanted to have a baby more than anything her whole family's out here to help too and she's a trainer and she saved and saved and saved and she was very very responsible saved her money puts money away in a trust she did everything everything right and then when the, she met the guy she's like I want to have your baby and he's like well, do I have to be here she's like well just for the conception part then you can go <laughs> but no they, so they still have a relationship and I'm, I'm joking a little bit because it's still hard emotionally mm. for the man not to be there mm-hmm. but the son has a relationship with the father and the father's family if it works in out, Africa <laughs> if, it, if it works out great yes. um, yeah. I have a, another friend from high school that used a known donor who is very much a part of their family mm-hmm. she's gay and she and her partner had this baby mm. with a you know like an uncle guy friend mm-hmm. yeah. and it I guess it works out they seem to be one big happy family but there's you really have to plan the, that's what I'm saying it's yeah you but think you know plan. That it doesn't always happen that way yeah. and things can go wrong and so the friend of mine who has the two kids did it with unknown donor sperm and it's just it's much easier that way and there's no fear sure and she is so proud and will have no problem when that day that day comes to explain yeah. to the kids why they who's well, daddy you know, my biggest fear was when I was going to all my girlfriend's weddings in my 20s and I was the bridesmaid or whatever and they had their kids and it was all bliss and everything and I got married later so you know I took my time because I was in no rush because everybody was getting divorced and it was misery and fighting and the kids were just being tossed in between and having problems and I was that kind of shocked me so by the time I was in my 30s most of my friends I would say 95% of them were divorced at that point and they use their kids as a pawn and was they a pawn. were it's just awful it's awful and the kids feel you know whatever so then I really put the brakes on it I said geez you know that really affected me too because I was like that looks awful you know it's it's such a I was a pawn. there's such a high rate of divorce and people just not wanting to really commit and do the sacrifice needed and bite the bullet everybody has an ego everybody's angry of course, of course. you know you, you have passion with somebody and all of a sudden you can't stand the sight of them and you want to destroy them like that's and you have a child yeah. yeah, that's in the well, middle of and that. They, and they bear the brunt, and it's very, it's very sad. Yeah, I mean, but we don't know that's going to happen. You know, you no, marry someone, and you statistics think... Statistics are... Yeah. You know, you're I looking mean, at statistics, and you're like, geez. Just say and think. You know, you got to study for... Uh, you know, you got to study to take a driving test and to get a driver's license. You should have to take a fucking test before you can be a parent. I'm sorry, but that's what I believe. <laughs> just because <laughs> just because your ovaries are producing eggs, and a penis is of making course. sperm, and you can have a baby just doesn't mean you, you should. Doesn't mean 
mean you should. Exactly. Just because you can afford to buy a car doesn't mean you should be a driver. Right.